Hey guys, it's Cody Warner at the Idaho Medical Academy. Today we're going to be going over the long bone and joint immobilization skill sheet. First video I'm going to show you is me going through a full testing scenario, exactly what it would look like when you're testing off. Then we'll break the skill sheet down step by step and explain some more things on the way. So let's get it. All right, BSI seems safe. I've been informed by my proctor my patient has an obvious deformity to their right arm. I'm going to go ahead and uh, make sure my patient's manually stabilizing that extremity. So go ahead and put it in a position that's most comfortable for you. Now I'm going to go ahead and check CMS, circulation. I feel a pulse. Sensory, can you feel me touching? Awesome. And motor, can you wiggle your fingers? Perfect. I'm going to put a splint on that arm. I'm going to use a SAM splint. I'm going to measure it. I'm going to make sure that it fits. I'm going to do it on the opposite extremity. Looks like it fits. I'm going to have you hold this in this arm. Perfect. I'm going to secure that using a Curlex roll. It's going to be soft. It's not going to add too much pressure. It's going to allow his extremity to swell without causing any additional pain. I'm just going to softly wrap it on. The point of my SAM splint is actually providing some support to this broken extremity. And I'm going to be immobilizing the joint below, which would be his wrist. Perfect. Now I want to immobilize the joint above, so I'm going to use a triangle bandage. We're going to immobilize his elbow. We're going to be creating a sling and swath. Take my triangle bandage, tie a knot. Place this in his elbow, around his arm. Okay, and I want this arm and wrist as high as possible, as comfortable for you. Perfect. I'm going to tie my knot off to the side. I'm going to ask my patient to drop the weight of his arm, make sure my sling's holding it, which it looks like it is. Got my sling, I'm going to dress it, make sure it fits properly. Now I'm going to do a swath, I'm going to use another Curlex, and I'm going to make sure that I am securing his entire extremity to his body. I'm going to come just underneath this arm. Perfect. I'm going to ask my patient to lean forward. Thank you. Then I'm just going to continue to wrap this around the body, making sure I'm tucking this elbow, making sure it's nice and secure. I'm going to tie it off in the back, and you can lean back for me. All right, now that I have everything immobilized and secured, I'm going to check CMS again. So I'm going to check sensory. Can you feel me touching? Can you wiggle your fingers? I got motor. Can't check a pulse, so I'm going to check cap refill, which I do have cap refill. That would be the end of my test. Okay, you guys, that was a testing scenario. That's exactly what it should look like when you're testing off uh, in class. Now let's go ahead and break that skill sheet down step by step and explain some more things on the way. Okay, you guys, just like every other skill sheet we went over, the first thing we have to do is BSI, making sure our scene is safe. So I've got my gloves on. Scene safe. Um, I'm going to come up to my patient. I'm going to make sure they're manually stabilizing their extremity. Most patients, when they're in pain, will already be self-splinting, especially with an arm injury like this. They're going to be holding it in place. They don't want to be throwing it around. Hey, check it out. It's clicking, right? So we got our arm here. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is check CMS. We want to make sure we have circulation, checking a pulse. We want to make sure we have motor functions. So can you wiggle your fingers? Perfect. Then we want to make sure we have sensory. Can you feel me touching? Now we have CMS and it is intact. Now we're going to start splinting. Plenty of different splints out there. Just for this video, we're going to use a basic SAM splint. We can mold it. It's foam. It's got a little piece of aluminum inside and we can shape it to anything. What I want to do is measure it on their uninjured arm because I have to actually press it down. And if his arm is broken and I'm pushing on that, it's going to cause a lot of pain. So I'm going to come over to the other side. And I'm going to place it as if I was placing it on this arm. And I'm going to kind of mold it. Sometimes when these are brand new, you can even kind of mold it to yourself. But we don't want any gaps when we're putting it on their arm. So I'm going to have my patient hold it, give them a little handle. And now I'm providing support to this broken part. Uh, with this, with the same splint, and when, whenever we have a broken extremity, 
we want to mobilize above and below. So we have a long bone injury, we want to mobilize below and above. So this is going to help us immobilize the wrist. When securing the SAM splint, I'm going to use something soft like Curlex. I'm not going to put it on too tight because with broken extremities, they typically swell. If I have something constricting on there and it's swelling, it's going to cause a lot of pain and possibly cut off our CMS. So I'm going to place this on. I'm just going to wrap it softly so that's just holding the splint on. I'm not, I don't have to do it too tight. You can go over the brake, that's fine. If it causes them too much pain, you can just go to the side of it. No real method, just make it look pretty. And make sure we're immobilizing the joint below. And then I usually just tuck my Curlex into one of these uh, twists I've already made. Okay, I've got the joint below uh, immobilized. I've got um, some support on that broken extremity. Now I'm going to do a sling and swath to immobilize the joint above. So we're going to unfold our triangle bandage. We're going to look for our two long pieces, which would be here and here. We have one short piece on the bottom. That's where we're going to tie our knot. And that's just a simple overhand knot, creating a cup for our patient's elbow. Once I have that knot tied, I like to put my knot on their tricep. Make sure I have the splint on the correct way. If I try to do it underneath his elbow or somewhere on his forearm, the whole splint will be upside down or backwards. So knot on the tricep, slack piece over there. And then my other slack piece is going to come underneath his arm, between his elbow and chest, and just go straight to the back. Then I have my patient lift their arm as high as possible, just so it's above the heart to reduce any swelling. And then I'm going to tie a knot off to the side. Just a quick, easy knot, easy to untie, but something that actually holds some support. Perfect, and you can relax your arm. All right, now that I got that joint above immobilized, I want to secure the entire extremity to his body. So I'm going to use something uh, soft again, we'll use Curlex, but like I said before, with splints, you can use anything that'll work. I like to place this in my patient's hand, make sure he can hold it, and I'm going to make sure I secure the elbow, and like I said, I'm just securing it to the body, so I don't have to do anything fancy. We're going to go underneath this arm, so we're not taking both extremities away from him, and this way, his elbow and arm will be jumping up around, especially when we're moving in the back of an ambulance or if he wants to walk. And then we can tuck it, just like that. Now our entire extremity is secured. I'm going to check CMS again to make sure whatever I did didn't take anything away. Can you still feel me touching? Can you wiggle your fingers? I can't check a pulse, so I will check cap refill. Cap refill looks good. And that's how you would immobilize and secure an upper extremity. Okay, you guys, that was the explanation step by step. If you have any more questions, go ahead and contact your instructor. Thanks for watching.